Good morning and welcome. It's 7.30. It's the 27th day of December 2021. It's 40, 40 degrees and cloudy here in Ventura, California. And I am your guide to all the tabletop role-playing game news, weather, sports, oh, so much controversy and general internet nonsense that is the OGGM. Hi, it's me. <laughs> and it's Monday, the 27th day of December. The year is coming to an end, but that doesn't mean we don't have some end-of-the-year tabletop role-playing game news. Uh, so let's take a look at what's going on in the world today and how it might change as the week progresses. And of course, probably the number one story of the week slash month slash entire year has been the tabletop role-playing game community trying to devour itself. Uh, OSR players against 5e players, 5e players against Twitter players, Twitter players against OSR players, OSR players against it's just basically us, them, them, us, you, me. In the past week, I've been called both alt-right and alt-left. I've been yelled at for being too angry and yelled at for not being angry enough. Um, yeah, so it's just this anger and frustration and lashing out at each other, lashing out at Wizards of the Coast, lashing out at every company because they removed a word, and all these other companies attacking the history of the game because it's problematic, and just everybody angry at everybody over everything, and tending to forget that at the end of the day, it's still just a silly game about elves with sticks, but yes... It's easy to say that the number one story about tabletop role-playing games for the week slash month slash year has been the rage. And most of the rage is sort of directed at the changes and the accusations and the, oh, Oriental Adventures is racist and blah, blah, blah. In fact, somebody called me racist today. So, yeah, it's just, yeah. But there are other things going on in the world, I think. So let's take a look. Uh... We now know that there is a new Dragon's Lance novel coming out from Tracy and Margaret. It is called Dragons of Deceit. It's Dragon's Lance Destinies Volume 1. It is being advertised as both a classic Dragon's Lance novel and a Dungeons and Dragons novel. I guess that was how the lawsuit was uh, regulated, that uh, everybody can take credit for it. And it should be coming out in 2022. Uh, and it deals with a uh, character named Destina Rosethorn and uh, time travel and generally whatever. Is it going to be as good as the classic Dragon Lance novels of the past? Probably not. And speaking of Dragon Lance, we have the Dragon Land Nexus has gone live and released its first product. It is called Champions of Kryn. It is his 5e adventure. Um, on the digital format. Uh, Dragonlance Nexus, if you're not familiar with it, is an online gaming app aid thing similar to D&D &D Belong, be, eh, similar to D&D &D Beyond, but directed towards Dragonlance specifically. So, I mean, yeah, really, it's just D&D &D Beyond being made by a different company because, I mean, Dragonlance is mostly 5e now, so... Uh, yeah, I don't know. Still, it's nice to see Dragonlance sort of get its own little chunk of the internet and its importance to the history of the game recognized. So if you are a fan of Dragonlance and want to see Dragonlance converted to 5e and how it looks and works, check this out. And speaking of free dragons, uh, we have a free Dungeons & Dragons adventure called Dragons of Icespire Peak. This is a... Uh, a version of the Dungeons & Dragons Essentials Kit Adventure that was the second starter set released. Uh, but this is sort of a toned down, quick, quicker version of that adventure. So it's less pages, more just numbers and less story. Um, it does continue the story of Mines of Pendlehaven or Pendlevin or whatever it's called, the adventure that was in the first box set, which is still strangely enough considered like one of, if not the, best 5e adventures uh it's also interesting because i recently saw a vlog about somebody saying that there were no dungeons and dungeons and dragons anymore uh, especially in 5e didn't have dungeons and we don't need dungeons and literally the very first adventure for 5e minds of pendle Finn, is a dungeon and here's another dungeon in the dungeons and dragons essential kit dragons of ice spire peak 
it's a dungeon. So in response to the idiot who goes around saying there's no dungeons in Dungeons and Dragons anymore, dude, learn your product before you complain about it. And now for some news that it doesn't have a lot to do with D&D. Steam Forged Games is doing a tabletop role-playing game based on the Dark Souls video game franchise. This was announced through their Twitter post. Uh, we can be uh, expecting this game sometime in 2022. We have very little information on it, other than, of course, it's Dark Souls converted to a role-playing game. And um, we do know that Dark Souls has sort of influenced the tabletop role, I mean, not tabletop, video game industry greatly. So there are so many games that now refers to themselves as Souls-like. Uh, highlights of the Souls-like, of course, is strict management of equipment, strict management of stats, very dark fantasy, uh, dying a lot. I mean, everybody always complains about how they die in Dark Souls, very grim, very live fast, die young. So how that would relate to a tabletop role-playing game will be interesting. Edge Studios released a free holiday gift for fan of LO5R, Legends of the Fly Rings. Two maps! Two maps are the, are the territories for the Unicorn and the Scorpion Clans. Uh, and these are available through the Edge Studios online store. We have a tease at the upcoming Embers of the Imperium. The new role-playing game based on the Twilight Imperium board game from Fantasy Flight. The post includes information about the development of the game and that this, the game will be using the Genesis, Genesis, G-E-N-E-S-Y-S system and is set for release in 2022. So is Cypher Genesis the one that's supposed to be really, really good? I know one of those two ended up being considered a really good generic role-playing game, but I can't remember if it's Cypher or Genesis or if both of them are equally considered really great. I mean, I've heard nothing but good things about both systems. Um, so, yeah, it'd be interesting to see a Twilight Imperium tabletop role-playing game by from Fantasy Flight, who are the same people who did the Star Wars role-playing game. Interesting, though, that it's saying that it's from Fantasy Flight because Fantasy Flight shut down their tabletop role-playing game division and opened up edge studios the one who we just mentioned previously that are doing the lo5r and all the future star wars stuff so is this what does this mean i'm not sure what this means why would they say that fantasy flight studios is making this twilight imperium based role-playing game if fantasy flight studios shut down its tabletop role-playing game and rebranded it as edge i don't know there's probably a story there if you're needing some last-minute end-of-the-year gifts for the tabletop role-playing game player in your life, there is a Star Trek Adventure Core rulebook and Star Trek Adventures gift set up on Humble Bumble. Uh, it's $18 featuring tons of Star Trek Adventures 2D20 stuff from Mofidius, the game's company whose name I keep getting wrong. And all funds from this bundle will benefit the national park rescue and runs until january 7th uh there's still some bundles hanging around that were been hanging around there for a while now uh the pathfinder bundles are still up over at humble bumble uh we have this pathfinder second edition beginners bundle which includes everything you need to start playing pathfinder second edition source books role play um rule books monster books some adventures beginner stuff yeah stuff like that and we have the Ultimate GM Kit for Pathfinder, which is more geared towards Pathfinder 1st Edition. Uh, it's got Fantasy Ground stuff. It's got uh, source books, map packs, all sorts of Pathfinder 1E stuff. So if you want to get into Pathfinder 2E, you could do the Pathfinder 2E bundle. Or if you want to give a look again at Pathfinder 1E, the revolutionary role-playing game that sort of you know, change the industry back when it started. Um, yeah, that's available. And these benefits go to dre to benefit the Trevor Project and Tabletop Gamers, which are both charities. If your taste spins move towards near future, then we have a cyberpunk bundle on 
Humble Bumble, 30 items, PDFs for Cyberpunk 2020, including probably some of the stuff I ended up working for. Uh, and that'll be running through the end of the year. And we also have the Dungeon Master tokens and bundle, assets bundle for virtual tabletop games. It's a $30 bundle running through January 6th and has 44 different things on it for virtual tabletop systems. Uh, it doesn't say any specific tabletop, virtual tabletop. So I guess they're general um, add-ons that can hopefully run on most of the tabletop virtual thingies. The top two, Roll20 and D&D Beyond, probably guaranteed it's going to work on at least one of those two. As for the others, I've lost track about how many virtual tabletops there are now. The only one that really interested me was the one that supposedly does all the virtual tabletop stuff in Minecraft style art. So I think it would just be fun to do a voxel based <laughs> virtual tabletop where suddenly, you know, everything's squares and Minecrafty and you're going through Tomb of Horrors, but it's all Minecraft and just squares. And, you know, I doubt it will use Minecraft physics, though. So I don't see your characters just punching a wall until it breaks in um, that one. But that one looks fun. I don't think it's lasted, though. Let's just assume that whatever virtual tabletop role-playing game product we're talking about, it's usually going to be for D&D Beyond or uh, Roll20. Is there anything else going on in the tabletop role-playing game news? Other than, I mean, the big news is probably the Dark Soul and what's going to happen with that. Apparently there was a game convention that we uh, missed in North Carolina but called Mace 25. Doesn't really look like anything interesting came out of it news-wise, other than apparently they had a really good restaurant. And um, we do have the list for most anticipated tabletop role-playing games for 22 so far. Uh, so we will do that in a separate vlog because we've already talked about news a little too much. Um, but anyways, that is tabletop role-playing game news for the week. If any of the products I have talked about sound interesting to you, head on down to your friendly local game store at Chess Games Anime here in Ventura and ask them to order that for you or just check it out yourself if any of these sound interesting. If you appreciate this content and want to hear more, let me know. If you haven't had a chance to subscribe yet, your Christmas present to me could be to subscribe to my vlog and help me reach 1,000 subs by August 4th, 2022. Until next time, I have been your guide to all the tabletop role-playing game news, weather, sports, and general internet nonsense that is the OGGM. Have a great day. Have a great afternoon. Have a great week. Have a great New Year's. And get off my land! <laughs> See ya.